if you are going to put a line on a graph and you have numerical symbols, you already know three ways to make that happen. One way you were taught in grade eight and retaught in grade nine. What's the first way? If I gave you an, an equation, 3x plus y equals 7. Could you put that on a graph? How would you have done it if you were in the ninth grade? What would you do? Nobody remembers the ninth grade. Even the people that I taught it to scant months ago. But I would never put it on the table. Why? Because I didn't, I don't know, like, I just like, didn't. Of course you would put it in a table. If you were in the ninth grade. Which of those is index or input? The X. So you, the first thing you would do would be a table. You would have X, Y, you would put in some numbers for X. When x is 0, what's y? 7. When x is 1, what's y? 4. Right? And then you have graphics. Now you have two points you can graph. It. Everybody remembers that from the ninth grade, right? Or from a couple of weeks ago. 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 Right? Right. What did you just learn this year? At the beginning of this unit, you learned X and Y intersects, which is X comma zero and zero comma Y. And what did you do with those values? You put them into the equation, just like you put this x into the equation, yes? And then you learn slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. Right? Those are the three ways you know. Phenomena. have to turn the sound off. Right? Everybody cool? Okay. Well, now you're going to learn a fourth way. And this is called point slope form. Now, I'm going to write out what it looks like, and you're going to recognize everything that's in it. You're going to have seen it already. Point slope form looks like this. Y2 minus Y1 equals m bracket x2 minus x1. Have we seen all of those notations? Yeah. So you already know what they are, right? The x and the y's are what? The coordinates. Coordinates from a graph. And m is what? A slope. Cool? So, this and this these give you the point from which you start now in slope intercept form the point you start from is the y intercept correct then you count up and over or down and left and you get your line yeah well, the only difference with point slope form is these are the points that tell you. Okay? So what I'm about to do is I'm going to write out an actual point slope form equation. Okay? I want you guys to talk with each other and see if you can figure out how to put it on a graph without using any of the three things you already know. Everybody cool? Just using point slope form. See if you can figure it out. Okay?
Everybody ready? Do you think you could graph that without using a table, without using x, y intercepts, and without using slope intercept form? Do you think? I'm going to go ahead and put a Cartesian plane here for us while you talk about it. I'm going to give you a big hint. That is real important. You've had a bit of time. Okay. I didn't say that. I said you've had a bit of time. I highly doubt anybody in here is going to figure this out. All right. I got time. I'll just sip my coffee and mind my business. I'm great. Ms. Adams, how are you? That's no good. Fortunately, you'll be able to watch the video and fill it in tonight. Ms. Balboa, are you ready to go? Ms. Barracuda, are you ready to go? How many what? like 41 or something which is pretty pathetic considering I have had 200 odd students this year what's funny is for the rest of your people's lives until you unsubscribe you will be getting warnings that I've put up a new video about math that you don't do anymore alright what are some points that some people thought to try Vanessa. I thought about using the negative force the other side of the equal side and multiply the two sides of the So you were going to do algebra, right? I was working it down with algebra too. So then what I do is I multiply everything else inside so that 4x plus 5. And then after. Okay, your algebra went a little dodgy there. But I appreciate what Vanessa, what Vanessa is saying is she was going to move this four over here. Then she needed to distribute this. Then that would get rid of the brackets. Then she would have collected like terms. And then she would have seen where she was. Okay. I understand what she was thinking. Did anybody try something else? Because remember, guys, as soon as you look at slope-intercept form, you know how to graph it, don't you? Right? Because it's called slope-intercept form. So it gives you an intercept, then you find the slope. What's this one called? What's this form called? Point-slope. Point slope. So if slope-intercept gives you an intercept and a slope to work from, then what is point-slope going to give you, do you think? A point and a slope to work from. Everybody cool? So somewhere buried in here is a point that you can start from. Everybody understand? Now I told you that these are the hints. That's these two numbers, correct? Does everybody agree that those are the numbers that are important? Okay, now, watch. What is the easiest number, because I need to put coordinates into the X and Y spot, yes? Yeah. That's always our job, isn't it? 
what is the easiest number I can put into x and y to make this true? So Vanessa says 0. OK. What is 0 minus 4? 0 minus 4 is 0? Negative 4. And what is 0 plus 5? 5. 5 times 2 fifths is 2, correct? Does negative 4 equal 2? Does it? No. So I can't put 0 in. So that's out. But I'll give you a hint. It's got something to do with 0. Peter? 0 and 6. So you think this is a point that would work. So x would be 0. So that 0 plus 5 is 5. Right? Times 2 fifths is 2, correct? And 6, 6 minus 4 is 2. Does 2 equal 2? Yeah. Okay. Peter, how did you know that 0 and 6 would work? What did you have to do? You had to solve. You had to do algebra, didn't you? Yeah. Right? And we're trying to avoid algebra, aren't we? We're trying to make it like slope-intercept form. So Peter's way works. It works just fine. We can use algebra to find a million points to go in here, can't we? But it requires us to do algebra. Watch this. What if I put in the point negative 5, 4? What goes in for y? 4. What's 4 minus 4? 0. What goes in for 5? What goes in for x? What's negative 5 plus 5? 0. What's 0 times 2 fifths? 0. Does 0 equal 0? So, what do these guys tell us? Where did I get negative 5 and 4? I just reverse the sign. Does everyone see that? So, to graph this, I would go to negative 5, 4. Everyone agree? Then where would I go? Because I can't graph unless I have two points. Where do I go now? I've got a point to start from, just like in slope-intercept. What's this? Slope. So where do I go? Up 2 over 5, right? So up 2 over 5 takes me right to the point Peter had, 0, 6. And then I can draw my line. Is everybody cool? So let's recap what we just learned and proved. These points are the points, the point from which you start, yes? Except, what do we have to remember? To do what? To this sign. Right, we need to change the sign to get that point because we need to make this equality happen. Does everybody understand? Once I can make 0 equal 0, then I know I have a point on the line. And once I have a point on the line, every other point is 2, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5. Everybody cool? Now, that's a shortcut, but we proved it with math, right? So now, let's practice using that shortcut. So, what form is this in? Slope point form, right? Which means the attributes of the line, this equation will give me two pieces of information, won't it? What are the two pieces of information it gives me? 
It gives me the slope, which is what? Negative two-thirds. And it gives me the starting point, which is what? Plus one, negative two. Cool? Then graph it. Just sketch it. Plus one, negative two, I'm down here. And then I've got a negative slope, so I'm up two, over three, I'm out here. And there it is. Is everybody good? Everyone's good? Okay. Let's do the next one. It tells me a slope. What is it? Negative one-fourth. Does it tell me a starting point? What is it? Negative three, four. Then let's graph it. Where is negative three, positive four? Three to the right? Three to the left, up four. There is negative three, four. And then I have to go down one and out four, correct? So, down one takes me from four down to what? Three. And going positive four from negative three takes me to what x value? One. Can everybody do it? All right. Now, guys, as is always the case, does math always look the same? No. But do the rules continue to apply? Yes. So look at the next one and tell me what you think the M and the start are. Because it looks different. I'll wait a moment while you think about it. If you need to talk to your neighbor, please do. We will let Vanessa decide how long a moment is needed. Vanessa, are we at moment? Are we at a moment? Was that enough time? All right. What is the slope? One. Why, Bryce? Because if I put a bracket here, there's only one of them, isn't there? So the slope is one. Cool? What's the starting point? Negative two, negative one. So graph it. Go to negative two, negative one, that's down here, and a slope of one. So that's up one to zero, and right to negative one, correct? And then I draw my line. Is everyone good? Okay. You guys should be, you guys might have some more on the page you're on. Okay. All right. You should have four and five and six right there. Excellent. All right. So, sneaky Pete, what's my slope? What's my start? Slope is one over two. Everybody's starting to figure that out. What's my start? Negative four, zero. Absolutely right. Because when I put negative 4 in here, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 0 times 1 half is 0. This has to equal that, so it has to be 0. Cool? Graph it. Negative 4 is 0 is right there. Up 1 over 2 is negative 2, positive 1. Good up. Excellent. And now number five and number six are back to the easy stuff, just like at the beginning, to bring us full circle. 
What's the M? Uh, negative 1. What's the start? Uh, positive 5? No. Negative 5, negative 3. Because it still has to equal both sides. Still has to be 0 in there, right? Yes, you did. So if you said positive 5, this would have been 5 plus 5, which would have been 10. Oh, okay. Everybody cool? Do we need to graph it? No? Good. And this one? 4 fifths and our start. And our start? One. Ten. Everybody good? Okay. That's just looks. All right? That's the tools you need to use this form to solve problems. Okay? Everybody good? All right. So let's see how, if we can solve problems. Graph this. Do you need to put it in slope-intercept form? No. Do you need to do a table of values? No. Do you need to do 0x and y0? Or 0, uh, x0, 0, 0, y? No, because now you know point-slope form. Where are you going to start? Uh, negative, one, negative 1 up 2. Agreed? What's your slope? Up 1, 2, and a run of how far? One, two, three. And to left and down three. I mean two down and three left. One, two, three. Does everyone agree that there's our line? Is everyone good? Okay. And that was just from what we knew. The M was two-thirds, and our start was negative one, positive two. Cool? Now, do not write down what I'm about to write down. Just watch. Is everybody watching? Everybody cool? I just got rid of the brackets. Everybody good? I distributed that in. Yes? How do I get rid of this 2? Add 2. So y is going to equal 2 thirds x plus 2 and 2 thirds, isn't it? What form is that? Slope intercept form, which means the y intercept is two and two thirds, correct? And my slope is two thirds. Please notice the slopes are the same, yes? Now watch what happens when I zoom in. What's my y intercept? 1, 2, and 2 thirds. Does everybody see? Exact same line, totally different looks. Everyone get it? What does that tell you you can do with all these forms of a line? Interchange them to whatever purpose you need. If you have a slope and a point, what are you going to use? Point-slope form. If you have a y-intercept and a slope, what are you going to use? Slope-intercept form. If you have the two intercepts, you're going to use x0 and 0y. Everybody understand? I'll take your silences, yes. Okay, do the next one. What's my slope? What's my start? So, yeah, you're right. 
go to negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 1. And I need a slope of negative 2. So that's up 2 over 1, or down 2 and over 1. And then I make my line. Cool? Can everybody do this? Yeah? Okay. So now we're going to do the hardest one. You guys should have this on your screen still. Two perpendicular lines. How much information is in that question? The question. There's a lot, isn't there? What does this tell us about the two lines? They're going to cut, they're going to cross. And since they're perpendicular, what does that tell us about the slopes? Line 1 has a slope of m, correct? What is line 2's slope? Negative 1 over m. Because the m's got to switch places, yes? So that's important. What else does it tell us? They cross at the y-axis, which means they cross somewhere on the y-axis, right? Which means what do they share? If they both cross at the same spot in the y in oh, I just gave it away. On the y-axis, what do they share? The y-intercept is the same, isn't it? So this tells us that the y-intercept of line 1 equals the y-intercept of line 2, doesn't it? Right? And finally, we have one of the equations, don't we? So we know that line 1 is this equation. 2x minus y plus 8 equals 0. Can we do something to this to get me a y-intercept and a slope? What? If I move y to the other side, 2x plus 8 equals y. Now do I have a y-intercept and a slope? So my y-intercept for both of them is what? 8. So my y-intercept equals 8. And what is the slope that I need in line 2? This is line 1. His slope is 2, correct? Which is what? 2 over 1. So what's the slope I need for line 2? What do I do with this fraction? Flip it and make it negative. So the other line has what is its equation? y equals m. What's my m? Negative 1 half x plus b. What's my b? My y-intercept is b. The b had to be the same. So what is it? Plus 8. Now, if you were going to put it on a graph, you'd go up to plus 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Give me a slope of positive 2. So down 8 and over 4. That gets me my positive 2 slope, yes? And then the other one was down 1 and over 2. And that gets me line 2, which I will change colors. And this line, there's the 90 degrees. Is everybody good? Okay. You guys should have a tiny bit of space left at the bottom of your sheet. I want to show you one thing. 
that will cause you guys trouble. Okay? What's that? When you see numbers written like that in math class, what is that? They're coordinates. So that's an X and that's a Y, correct? Everyone agree? Okay. What's that? What's that? Coordinates. Now, if I tell you these are connected by a line, right? What's the equation? Put the Y's on the bottom? Okay. So Vanessa is saying, she's. what is she finding? What are you finding when you do the Y's and the X thing? Slope. So Vanessa is saying find the slope. All right. Slope is Y2 minus Y1 minus x1 will give me the slope. Yeah? So what is it? 4 plus 5 over negative 8 minus 3. Yes? Which is what? 9 over negative 11. Do we now have a slope? Can I make an equation now? Can I make an equation now? Why, Saida? What do I have? I have a slope and a point and another point. Can I make the slope point form now? Yeah. How many versions of slope point form can I make when I have two points? Two. Because I have two points, don't I? There's going to be this version, which I will do in red. Y, this is 3, so what goes in the equation? What did I have to do with the sign? Reverse it, so what goes in the equation? Plus 3 or minus 3? Minus 3 equals my slope. What was my slope? What's my slope? Negative 9 elevenths. X minus, what's my X? Oh, I screwed that up. Y plus 5 and X minus 3. Slope, point. Everybody cool? What's the other equation going to be? Y I've already done this one so what's the other one going to be? Plus 4? Minus 4 equals what's my M? Negative 9 elevenths and plus 8. Now, are those the same line? Yeah. Right? Because if I put this red one in here, I get 0 and 0, don't I? If I put this blue one in here, I get 0 and 0, don't I? So that means if the red one goes in here, should it work? It should, shouldn't it? 
So it would be y, oops, not y, sorry, negative 5 minus 4 equals negative 9 over 11, 3 plus 8. Does everyone agree? What's 5 minus 4? Negative 5 minus 4 is? Negative 9. What's 3 plus 8? 11. So I'm going to have 11 in the middle. What happens to that 11 and this 11? Cancel. What's left on this side? Negative 9. Does negative 9 equal negative 9? So as you can see, I have two versions of the exact same line. Why? Because I started from a different point. Does everyone understand? Because it's point-slope form. How many points could I put in for this number and this number? How many different combinations can there be? Infinite. Because any point on this line will work. Does everybody get it? Okay. Please go to page 372 and work on that, if you would be so kind. Tomorrow we're going to do one last thing with this unit, then it's review time. Oh, look at that. 20 minutes with which to work on your homework. Which means only all of you won't have it done tomorrow. Yeah, but I'll have a crazy amount of socials done.